All right, I've opened up my fantasy landscape, assignment one. I've opened up the PSD, which has all of these different layers. First thing I'm going to do is delete layers I don't need. So anything that's not like my sketches, I can delete. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as a different name because I don't want to change my assignment one in ways where I can't get back to my original assignment. So I'm going to say file, save as PSD. I have to do this through Chrome because Safari will not let me change the name until after the fact. And so Safari will just overwrite the original. So by saying save as PSD, I'm going to change the name from assignment one to proving ground one. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. Command D. Then I'm going to hit uh, function F11 and find that on the desktop and then mark it with yellow because I am currently working on this. All right, next, I'm going to go in my folder of assignments and go to assignment two, which I have now done everything I can to finish and clean up. So in my PSD, which is not what I'm going to open, so for instance, I'd have to open a new photo P1 or say file new, right? And I don't want to do that. So I don't want the PSD of my creature. I want the finished PNG, which is one layer, but cut out cleanly. The same one we used when we submitted for assignment two. And so if we're working on cleaning up our creatures, especially the edges of our creature, this is the, the thing you want to do before you start the proving ground. But my creature's edges are pretty sharp. Right? I got all the little hairs. I got the mustache. Doesn't look like there's any debris. So now I'm ready to take this, think of it as a sticker, and to bring my creature into my landscape. This is what I recommend. In Photo P, click on the topmost layer of your landscape. And remember, all these layers give us control of different features. So you need, you're required to have at least five. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, making up my landscape. So from the topmost layer, I'm going to drag in my creature, my PNG. It's going to come in big because we designed our creature to print as big as our landscape at full resolution. Then I can hit return and you can see that those pixels are all nice and sharp, but that the creature might not really fit into the landscape yet. That's because he's just floating in the middle and it doesn't really look like his feet are standing on those, those rocks. And maybe I don't even want him in the extreme foreground. Think of putting a, a character on a stage. So the first thing I do is I move my character down through these layers. And immediately, as you start putting your character be behind things, you start to get a sense of activated space because of something called relative perspective. Relative perspective is just the fact that things overlap things <laughs> in space. Now, if I want to make my life really easy, which I don't because I'm interested in learning the skills, I would just hide any place where my creature is touching the ground because that's where my creature's angle of anatomy actually has to match the setting. But I do like putting him behind this plant, but maybe I don't like him placed right in the middle that big. And if I keep moving him back, and I can use command left bracket to do this. Eventually he becomes this kind of celestial being above the, uh, 
the mountaintops. Ooh, I am very displeased in my creation. Okay, so what do I need to do? First, I want to pick which layer, basically which level, do I want my creature to show up? Foreground, middle ground, background. It's almost always going to be middle ground, but do you want it in the near middle ground like that? Or do you want it in the far middle ground like that? I think I want mine in the near middle ground, but in front of this leafy green plant. And then I'm going to hit Option Command T while my PNG is still a smart object. And I'm going to play with different sizes of my character. And maybe tilt him a little bit. Maybe flip him horizontally. For this kind of darker scene, this evening scene, it kind of makes sense that my character has these owl eyes. Now, I like that, but I miss that it was being overlapped by the plant, so I'm going to flip him back. And kind of stick him here. Now, he's taking up just about 25%. The other thing I can do is I can say, you know what, this rock is really kind of limiting what I'm seeing with my character. So what if I move that rock so I can see the foot right there touching actual ground instead of it covering it up? Or maybe I stretch the rock, Option Command T with that layer, hold down Shift, and just stretch it to be a little bit less in the way and obvious. All right. And then maybe I push that rock in front of the blue crystal. And then maybe I use my lasso with a two pixel feather like we were doing to cut out our creature, to cut out that rock in a way that I, I like a little bit more than what's in the reference. And then same thing with the green plant. So this is a great opportunity to make choices to improve your landscape. Maybe even to resubmit assignment one. So I'm going to cut out these plants so that they're a little bit more interesting whoops wrong layer in shape as well all right so far so good and then there is this layer which is peeking through and use auto select to figure out which one that is That's not helpful. So I can get rid of that part of that layer. And then I want more of this layer. So I might internally composite. I'll just make it clear by turning off all the other layers for now. And what I'm going to do is copy some of this ground, which is covered up. Because I need more ground for my creature. Loop around it, duplicate Command J, and then move it to cover up the hole. Kind of like what we were doing with a Clone Stamp last class. Option Command T. I can grow it. I can tilt it, I can flip it, I can bop it, I can twist it. I can show all my friends. I can warp it. I can warp it. So, without too much work, just through internal compositing, I've created more ground. And then if I use my soft-edged eraser, 
my good old friend, the soft edged eraser, that's large, but with a 0% hardness, then I can blend those elements together. Just by softly obliterating that hard edge. All right, so now my creature is going to go on top of that, like there. So when you're working on blocking for a play, you don't have all the props on the stage. You know the props are going to be there, but those are those foreground elements. So I can turn those off for now. They're there, and I can move them around and work with them later. But right now, I am blocking my actor on the stage, figuring out where they're going to stand and how to make it more believable that they are actually occupying that space. So I'm going to turn these off for now to be added later and played with. Okay, so now I've got ground for my creature to stand. And the problem is his anatomy does not match or its anatomy does not match. Yes, the feet kind of match the perspective of the ground, but it doesn't look like those feet are really sitting in on that ground, right? So how can we fix this? We're going to use a new tool called Puppet Warp. So notice that my, my creature is a smart object still. So I'm going to mark it green. This is my hero smart object. When I change it, I'm going to make a duplicate, Command J. And this is in my proving ground, not my assignment one. I'm going to turn off the, uh, the hero one behind, and I'm going to play with this new tool first by rasterizing, because I've chosen the size of my character at resolution, and then by going to Edit Puppet Warp. This is a pretty advanced tool. It's pretty impressive that PhotoP has it. Okay, so Puppet Warp is different than the regular warp. The regular warp gives you nine squares, and you can kind of push and pull like it's rolled out dough. Puppet Warp takes a cleanly cut out asset on a layer, which is what your creature should be, right? And it draws a polygon wireframe over it, just like if it were a 3D model. Your job is to then take this creature and put pins in it, just like you were pinning down a dead butterfly to a display case. So I'm going to pin it on that foot, and I'm going to pin it on this foot, and then I'm going to pin it at the top of the head. Now, you don't want too many pins, because these become your access points for warping. So if I move now the top of the head, notice how the feet stay where they are because those are pinned. But I can stretch it in other ways. Do, 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 do. This is really helpful for character animation. What I'm actually interested in is fixing the feet placement. Like shuffle the feet a little bit to get that anatomy right so the thing looks like it can stand. Test the ground first. Pat, pat, pat and then step confidently. You can also put a pin in the hip because you understand how the anatomy works. So if the, the hip joint tilts, then the collarbone tilts, then the head tilts, all to match, right? Remember, this is on a copy. Now, if you put too many pins in and you start stretching too much, you start to get weird distortions. So you put the pins where you have a dynamic hinge in the body. Elbows, feet, wrists, ears, right, tails. But you don't put it where you have static elements, rib cage, cranium, because you don't want those to stretch. Because you still want it to look like the same character. Okay, so I hit return. And now I, have, I can compare it to what it was before. So it was like that, and now it's like this. And I want you to pay attention to the feet. Does the angle of the anatomy match the environment? 